All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for your patience as I get my Zoom screen all, um, all oriented. Um, but just wanted to say good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom today uh, to be part of this admitted student graduate experience. Um, we're so pleased that you took some time to be here today, and we look forward to spending about the next 90 minutes with you. You can see my name um, on the corner of my screen, but my name is Dr. Emily Hewitt. I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Engagement and Practice, as well as a faculty member here at the School of Public Health. Um, and if I haven't done so already, I just want to say congratulations to you on your acceptance to the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Today, we want to talk a little bit about why we hope that you will choose to pursue your education here at the University of Michigan. I hope that by the end of today's session, you'll have a better idea of the opportunities that exist here at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. And also what difference differentiates our institution from some of the other programs that you may be considered. We understand that you have an important decision ahead of you, um, but you've already made one really admirable decision, which is to pursue a, a career in the field of public health. Many of you, I imagine, have chosen to pursue an education in public health because it aligns with your values. Uh, the values in the field align with the way that you see the world. For some of you, that decision to study public health might be linked to your belief in social justice or the pursuit of health equity. Others on the call today may feel strongly about the role of science in evidence-based decision-making or using data to drive our solutions. Others on the call might really align with that value or that public health principle of prevention, um, of creating environments where people can lead their fullest, healthiest lives. Whatever public health values align with yours, you're sure to find a community of like-minded individuals here at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. I've been at the School of Public Health uh, since 2008. And in my current role as assistant dean, I get to work with staff in admissions, in career development, in student affairs, public health practice, online education, and in our undergraduate programs. The work that I do to support student success at the individual program and policy level is deeply meaningful to me. One of the things that I believe differentiates the University of Michigan from other schools of public health is the close mentoring relationships that often develop between students and our faculty. The vast majority of our faculty are teaching. You'll find them in our classrooms on a weekly basis. And this paves the way for students and faculty to build connections both inside and outside of the classroom. Alongside today's event, you've been invited to take a deeper dive into your admitting department. And I hope that you have or will engage with those virtual sessions where you'll meet faculty, staff, and students, and have the opportunity to ask more specific questions about your department or program. We know that the School of Public Health is big and that this is an important decision. So we hope that we want to help you fully understand the network of staff and faculty who are here to help you along your journey. We're all invested in your success because we understand that you are part of creating a healthier world for all. Okay, so on the slide ahead of you should be our agenda for today. Uh, you'll see that we have a break planned around one o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll uh, wrap up with a panel featuring some of our current students and recent alums, and that panel will conclude around 1.30. So let me make sure that we're all on the same page and oriented to Zoom. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been using this uh, as a primary method of communication, learning, work over the last couple of years but let's just make sure that we're all on page using the same functions for today. So we'll be using the chat, Q&A, and polls 
uh, and we'll let you know when we're using each of those. Uh, you should be able to see the chat and the Q&A at the bottom of your screen right now. Uh, and we'll probably use the, we'll primarily use the Q&A function during the panel, um, the panel portion at the end of our gathering. Okay, so I believe the chat should be open uh, and let's get started with a quick question over chat. Uh, so if you would, please share the city and state or country that you're joining us from today. Uh, so if I were typing, I would type Ann Arbor, Michigan. So go ahead and share your location in the chat. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll invite my colleague, Mary Beth Carroll, who some of you may have interacted with. She's our Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions. Uh, she's going to unmute and help me work through uh, understanding where people are calling in from today. Mary Beth. Thanks everybody. And we're so happy to see you. We appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. And it's, it's really exciting to see people logging in from not only all over the state of Michigan, but the US and, and really all over the world. It really speaks to the, the global reach that the University of Michigan name has. So, so thanks for that. Especially, I want to give a shout out to for those who are in different time zones. We recognize that some of you are in places where it's probably pretty late. So thanks for making that special accommodation for us. Wow, all right. I'm just joining in Shanghai, Dublin, California, Oklahoma City, India, Virginia. Honolulu, you definitely have better weather than we have in Michigan right now. I woke up to about two inches of snow outside. It's beautiful, um, but I, I could use some, some Honolulu beaches. Canton, Michigan, you know what I'm talking about with the snow. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for putting in those submissions. I uh, appreciate everyone who shared where they're calling in from. Since we're talking about physical location, uh, I imagine something that is on the minds of some of you at least um, is about kind of the modality and whether or not our classes would be offered in person this semester. Um, and our next semester. And I'm proud to say that the University of Michigan has really successfully delivered a largely residential in-person semester this academic year. Um, and we've been able to do so for a number of reasons. One of those reasons is because of our high vaccination rate for faculty, staff, and students, uh, as well as other policies that have been observed on campus and in this building, um, including masking, daily symptom tracking, uh, and an abundance of free on-campus testing locations. Um, so we've, we're really pleased by um, how we've been able to deliver our education this year and looking ahead to next fall. I'm delighted to say that over 95% of classes are in our residential program are scheduled to be fully in-person next, next fall. It would be difficult to put into words how much all our lives have changed over the past two years. And part of that change has been the tremendous losses that we've all had to deal with. Um, we've lost a lot uh, and we've grown in our ability to learn and connect with each other. Uh, platforms like Zoom uh, and other online learning platforms uh, as well as the patience and resilience of our faculty, staff, and students uh, have allowed us to continue learning throughout the pandemic. And particularly in that first year, the ability to join classes and collaborate remotely was really crucial. Um, but also important is the ability to be in classrooms together, to exchange ideas in person, uh, to grab a faculty member at the end of the class uh, and to continue learning during office hours. Our experiences over the last two years have highlighted what is possible in terms of learning and working remotely. And they've also underscored the value and energy that comes when we're gathered together as a community. As such, the University of Michigan and the School of Public Health remain committed to carrying out our educational mission in a way that prioritizes in-person learning for our residential programs, but also protects the health and safety of our community members. 
So again, assuming it remains safe to do so, over 95% of our courses will meet in person next fall. The remainder will be offered in an online or hybrid format. Uh, so the message here is to start looking for housing and pack your bags. We're really looking forward to seeing all of you in Ann Arbor next fall. Okay. I do want to get a little bit of a sense of where people are um, on the call today, um, who's in the session. So you should have a poll that's popping up um, asking you to let us know which academic department or program you were admitted to. Uh, so if you would, go ahead and uh, fill out that poll. It's on your screen now. Give you some time to, um, to um, fill out the poll and then we'll reflect on where, where people are. I should, uh, I should add, if you were admitted to two or more departments, you can just select one in this poll. Okay. See, responses are still coming in. Mary Beth, are you able to see the poll results? Not quite yet. Um, a couple things that while we're waiting that maybe we want to point out to the audience. Um, the health informatics degree program is a, a special program that's administered in partnership with the School of Information. And then another note that might be helpful for this population also, um, noting our population in health sciences master's degree programs. Um, those are fully online programs and this year we'll be graduating our second class. So it looks like the poll results did come in. Is there anything that you're noticing in particular, Emily? Uh, I see that we have great, strong representation from folks admitted to our epidemiology department. So that's fun to see. Um, also, uh, but we do have representation from all of our six departments, as well as the health informatics program that you talked about, as well as our population health sciences online degree program. So. Um, everyone who's on, we have representation from all of our departments and programs. I think that's really exciting. Uh, hope that all of you um, will find something in this um, panel or in our presentation today that is beneficial to you. Uh, everyone across all departments help us grow closer to our mission. Um, here at the Michigan School of Public Health, our mission, if you haven't already read it, is to pursue a healthier, more equitable world through education, research, and action. We work with compassion, innovation, and inclusion to create meaningful, lasting impact. Each day, our faculty, staff, and students work together towards this mission. We're looking for visionary thinkers to join us. We're looking for that next class of students to join our community and help us to pursue our mission. And we're really hoping that you will join us. Uh, there's someone else who I'd like you to meet. Um, I'd like to introduce our Dean, uh, Dean Du Bois Bowman. Dr. Bowman is a world-class biostatistician who focuses, whose research focus on neuroimaging. He's also a professor of biostatistics here at the School of Public Health. He has a message of welcome and congratulations for all of you. I'll turn it over to you. Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be here with all of you. And thank you for joining us from all around the country and in fact, all around the world. Welcome and congratulations on your acceptance to the University of Michigan School of Public Health. You've chosen an amazing moment to be part of this program because the past two years have made one thing abundantly clear. We need public health leaders now more than ever. Some of the biggest challenges that we face in society today, the COVID-19 pandemic, police violence, and climate change, for example, are all public health issues that require talented, well-trained teams to tackle them. They require highly skilled future leaders like we produce right here at Michigan Public Health. I'm excited for you to join us this fall and become a part of our community of leaders. 
I'll bet that some of you can relate to my experience of being drawn into this exciting field of public health. I'm sure like me, some of you thought about your future going in very different directions at some point, or maybe just a lack of clarity about the direction that you were heading. When I was an undergraduate student at Morehouse College, I decided to study mathematics, but also began taking pre-med courses because I contemplated going to medical school. But I wasn't one of those people who'd always gr grown up dreaming of being a physician. It was a meeting with a professor who would go on to become one of my key mentors in life that opened my eyes to a new direction that combined my quantitative skills on the one hand, along with my interest in health on the other. And I realized that public health and particularly as a biostatistician would allow me to impact people more broadly than just a single patient at a time. Ultimately, I wanted to devote my talents to helping people, and I discovered that through public health, I could do so. I bet some of you have had similar experiences. You knew you wanted to help people and to work in a field that was impactful and meaningful, but you weren't exactly sure what that was. So many students I talked to describe this feeling, and when they learn about public health, it just clicks. That's the field they want to be in. If that sounds like you, then I'm here to tell you you're in the right place. Something that I really enjoy in public health is that our field is, you know, while on the one hand very focused, on the other, it's very broad and wide and varied. Our students carry out impactful work in so many different ways. And during the, the course of their time here at Michigan Public Health, they discover the area within our field that speaks to them directly and their interest. And I'm confident that that will happen for you as well. For some, it's carrying out research in a laboratory. For others, it's conducting studies alongside the communities whose health they're trying to improve. Or it's working with hospital administrators to figure out better ways to deliver preventative care. I get to see our students put the skills that they're learning into action as they complete internships and apply practice experiences during their time at our school. This is one of my favorite things as Dean because I see a student's interest in public health translate into impact. Throughout the pandemic, this has happened in countless, countless ways. And just to give you a few examples, Students have worked with faculty to develop models about COVID-19 in India, which then helped to inform decision-making by health authorities in that country. Students also early on worked as contact tracers to help contain the spread of COVID on campus and more broadly in our community. And our students have worked with the State Youth Soccer Association in Michigan to develop a plan for reopening their activities and keeping games going safely during the pandemic. Students are engaged in critical work, of course, outside the pandemic as well. And a few examples include hosting important conversations around prison abolition and health equity, studying electronic uh, dating violence in adolescents and young adults, developing climate action plans for local governments and working to influence state and federal legislation that addresses chemicals linked to breast cancer. The list goes on and on and on. I could provide many more examples, but I'll, but I'll stop here. And I think that this gives you a flavor of the ways that so many of our uh, public health students are, are having impact. The sky's the limit for our students, and I'm constantly impressed with the impact that they make. And I can't wait for you to join them. So thank you for choosing to spend time with us today, and we look forward to welcoming you as a part of our community this fall. Now I'd like to welcome Whitney Peoples, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Thanks again, and go blue. Thank you, Du Bois. As Dean Bowman noted, I'm Whitney Peoples and the Director of DEI or Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here at the School of Public Health. 
I'm excited to join you all today to share a little bit more about our DEI work at the school. First, I'd like to share that I don't do this work by myself. I really work with the entire SPH community, but in particular, I work with three colleagues at the school who you will get to know during your time as student here. I work with Dr. Enrique Neblet, who is a professor of health behavior and health education. Dr. Neblet serves as one of our DEI faculty co-leads. He is joined in that work by Dr. Marie O'Neill, who is faculty in the Department of Epidemiology. Dr. O'Neill is our other DEI faculty co-lead. We will also welcome a new team member who will join right alongside you in the fall, and that person will be our program manager for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And together, the four of us will make up your DEI staff and really your partners and collaborators in this work at the school. The DEI work at the School of Public Health is a part of a broader initiative at the larger University of Michigan. In 2015, the University of Michigan embarked on a really ambitious and exciting and really groundbreaking DEI journey. The university sought to establish a DEI strategic plan that would last five years and that would stretch across all 19 schools and colleges and all of the central units on campus. And of course, the School of Public Health is a part of that community. And so in 2015, right along with the rest of the campus, we developed our diversity, equity, and inclusion plan, and we are very proud of that plan. We continue to evaluate and build on that plan now, and we invite you as new students to join us in that work. There are a number of different ways for you to get involved in DEI work at the school. One way is through your departmental DEI committee. Another way is through our school-wide DEI committee. I encourage you as you get to know your department to ask who's the chair of your departmental committee and connect with that person early. You can also get involved with DEI work at the school through our student mini grant program, which aims to empower students to propose programming and initiatives to support an equitable and inclusive community here at the school. You're also welcome to follow up with me directly to reach out to Dr. Neblet or Dr. O'Neill and share with us your ideas for getting involved in DEI work uh, and helping to move this important platform forward here at the School of Public Health. Again, I'm really excited to have spent a little bit of time with you today. I'm excited to get to know each of you as you move through your journey at the school, and I hope to hear from you in the fall. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Mariana from Career Services. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you, Dr. Peoples. My name is Mariana Nadaf, and I am the Associate Director of Career Services overseeing the careers team here in the School of Public Health. My pronouns are she and hers. We know that many of you are exploring options with the University of Michigan, and the burning question might be, will getting a degree at the University of Michigan help me in getting a career that I'm interested in pursuing? So I'm excited today to talk to you about the field of public health, the success of our students, and some resources and services that would be available to you. So research on government occupational outlook websites tell us that the public health sector is really exciting. There's a ton of growth. Um, this was the case even before the pandemic, but obviously the pandemic has heightened that need. So in each of the public health fields, we can see that there's this sun there with the bright outlook. A bright outlook means that these occupations are expected to grow and that there are a lot more openings in the field and that there are new and emerging occupations. So you can see a lot of them say faster than average or much faster than average. This is really exciting to know that these occupations are growing and that there will be lots of jobs available in each field. You can also see our alumni information. Our students are highly sought after by our employers. You can see that our students dive into opportunities that capitalize on their newly developed expertise and skills post-graduation. If you'd like some specific information about alumni data um, for specific programs, you can go to our website that highlights all the job placement information over the past four years for our recent grads. 
These go into detail about the percentage of graduates that settle into employment, their average salaries, the sectors that they're working in as graduates, and the employers that hire our students as well. There's a lot of detail there. I encourage you to go check it out. Many of you will be doing an internship as part of a requirement for your program. This is an exciting opportunity to think about your goals and your future career. Our careers office really encourages students to try new skills, new environments, maybe solidify and develop competency areas, or take the next step in a field where you're already comfortable. Students can pretty much determine their own route as far as their personal growth and advancement, how they can obtain an internship to do that. So as you can see here, our students work in a variety of industries for their internship. Although the top three continue to be hospitals, clinics or health systems, academia or nonprofit community-based organizations. Here's a selection of our internship host sites. Again, you can see such a variety here. Our office has such close contact with these employers. We host recruiters, HR professionals, and current employees for information sessions to share information about their organization, what roles they have available, and tips on applying. Um, within the pandemic, pandemic, we've noticed, noticed a variety of kinds of positions, including fully remote internships, in-person, as well as hybrid options. And we see that continuing even um, to this time. So we're really excited to offer these internships and these employers. With our the internship supervisors, they continue to be impressed by the caliber of our students interning with them. They regularly complete satisfaction reports that showcase that our students um, have the ability to complete learning objectives and tasks. Our students also share with us that they complete competencies that really help develop them in their fields. So if you come to SBH, we have a wide variety of resources available to you. We have an exclusive portal that showcases our curated positions. We have jobs, internships, and fellowship postings. And oftentimes, alumni will share those postings with us. So it's a really unique opportunity to get connected to a position that is sometimes tied to an um, alumni member as well. You also have the ability to get an email notification system. This will update you with the criteria of a position you're looking to um, obtain, and it will send you an email right away to let you know that a position has posted. You also have the opportunity to opt into an employer um, book workbook so that you can share your resume with employers on their own time. We also have a 24 seven digital library full of resources and tools on career development topics. It's gonna be a topic like resumes, cover letters, job search, negotiations, interview skills, for example. This library includes recorded workshops, lots of interactive tools, and links out to platforms that you have individualized access to. For instance, Glassdoor, being able to go on there, see organization reviews, compensation information, as well as uh, interview information. We also have an employer database. It showcases what employers have sought out our students in the past and are currently seeking them out. And we have an archive of all of the past postings. So if you're curious about what postings have existed in the past for students, you want to get a head start, you can view this archived posting um, database full of what employers are looking for, what compensation information has been available, and what application materials employers have looked for in certain careers. So this question, will attending the University of Michigan help me achieve the career that I want? We feel that it is a resounding yes. Not only does SPH have an amazing reputation, our roots go deep and wide. The quality of UM SPH is known. We also have tons of opportunities to take what you're learning in the classroom out into the real world. We have a public health practice office that Dr. Power will be talking about soon that will help um, talk about how students can access to how they can access to apply their learning to a variety of positions and projects. We also have research opportunities. The University of Michigan is a large research institution. You can be connected to faculty that are directly tied to unique research advance, advancements in the field of public health. 
our employers often tell us that they really value the interdisciplinary um, academic nature of our students programs. So you can view public health through a variety of lenses and employers really value that employer problem, uh, that problem solving mindset. Also, you have an amazing alumni network by joining the University of Michigan. Um, as a Wolverine, it's one of the largest in the world. We, you will have access to unique LinkedIn alumni groups. We also put on lots of alumni networking nights and opportunities to network with alumni. And you can have direct connections via an exclusive mentoring and alumni platform. This shows you a little bit of what this platform looks like. It's like LinkedIn, but better because um, these it's only for UM SPH alumni and students. And you have ways to go in there and filter out by department, um, by who's able to help with what. You can get formal mentoring. You can ask for industry specific resume reviews or interview prep, and you can reach out just to learn more about their journeys. So we have plenty of opportunities for you to connect with us. Um, our team's philosophy is that we provide individual career coaching um, and that it's not a one size fits all model. We really work with you to empower you um, and provide you with materials that will just elevate your success. We also have asynchronous materials as well as synchronous. We put on lots of employer information sessions, bring recruiters in um, to chat with our students, and we put on lots of panels too. So overall, um, our office offers you lots of career resources, job, fellowship, and internship opportunities, as well as career coaching. And we also help provide that as an alum as well, not just while you're a student. So you have access to these resources after you graduate. Our team is really excited to see you in the fall. We hope that you join us. Um, thank you all for listening. We're excited to start building your future together. So now I would like to invite Laura Power to talk about practice opportunities at the School of Public Health. Thank you. All right, well, I'm excited to be here. I'm just pulling up my slides here to share with you. So welcome everyone. It's great, I'm great, uh, very excited to be here to tell you about public health practice. Uh, I'm Laura Power. I am the Director of Public Health Practice and one of the faculty in our uh, epidemiology department. So just excited to tell you more about public health practice. Um, the mission of our practice office is to build and nurture individual community and organizational capacity for improved population health and greater equity. When we think about public health practice at our school, we think about it in a couple different categories. We like to think about experiential learning, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. We also focus a lot on workforce development, thinking about both our current and future workforce, which includes our students, and then community and academic partnerships. About that experiential learning, so for our students, you heard about this a little bit already from Mariana. You heard about the internship opportunities and all the great opportunities that, that are there for you. Um, that's built into the curriculum when you think about um, internships. We also have the applied practice experience, which is something that's built into the curriculum for our students. It includes uh, our, where our students go and work in a practice setting. They work on a project with a practice partner where they get to apply the skills they've been learning in the classroom. So as part of the requirement, you make two different products with a, at least one practice partner and you're applying the skills that you learned in, the, in a real world setting. The Dean in the beginning and um, mentioned a couple examples. One was the Michigan State Youth Soccer Association. That was a really neat experience where our students got to participate in this big uh, effort to help reopen and get kids playing soccer again. And that actually worked as an apex for some of our students. You'll hear more about internship and apex, I think for your departments too. That's part of the curricular opportunities that um, our students have are kind of built into the curriculum. And the way each department handles them are a little bit different and unique depending on what you're studying. Um, something that is really unique to our school of public health is the public health action support team, or we call FAST. This is an extracurricular opportunity for our students. It uses a service learning model where our uh, students can practice the skills they learn in the classroom in a real world setting. They can serve alongside communities and practitioners and they can deploy in times of need. And this happens regionally, nationally, and even globally. Um, we're very proud of FAST. This has been established in, since 2005. 
And since then, we've really been able to respond to many significant events, including hurricane responses and even the Flint water crisis. Uh, here is a list of some of the recent past fast deployments. And you can see there's a range of things. Many of the opportunities are local, um, working on understanding housing for Washtenaw County, helping to implement influenza clinics um, locally, working with the Detroit Food Policy Council, and even things like working on a CASPER or community assessment for public health emergency response. In addition to FAST, which is a great opportunity and lots of different things going on, we have these public health and action courses, which are seven week intensive courses that happen right now, they happen in the winter semester, and they're about getting our students prepared to go out and serve in, a, in the community on a certain project. Uh, we have both public health 615, 616, one's domestic, one's international. It's been a little tough the last two years, um, but we are going, and this year we're going to Mississippi. So we're very excited because the public health 615 class has just started. Our students uh, will be uh, working with some partners in Mississippi, going to the Delta region of Mississippi to work on a food prescription program. So they'll be doing sort of service learning in the classroom setting here, preparing to go on a trip that will happen after the class but they can really go into the field and apply the skills that they've been learning. So these are really unique opportunities for our students, uh, something that's special here at the University of Michigan. Other ways that our students can learn about practice. So you've got the APEX, you've got internship, you've got FAST, which is sort of extracurricular and many of our students choose to get involved. You have the public health and action courses. We have other things too, where students can find out what it's like to be working in public health. So we have a, a series called Public Health Perspectives where we invite in people working in practice and you know, come and share what it's like working and getting jobs there and what, what is the type of work that they do. So our students can ask questions and connect with people and have sort of a networking um, event for our students. We do other exercises too. For example, we have this emergency prepared exercise which we've done the past several years with our local health department, Washtenaw County, where we look at some different version of an emergency preparedness exercise. So this past year, uh, back in the fall, we did uh, impact of climate change and misinformation. And we did that in partnership with the um, emergency preparedness person from our local health department. So that was kind of a neat way to get our students involved. It's helpful to our local partner as well because they have to do some preparedness planning as well. So those are some examples of how we can our students can engage in practice. A lot of that was about our experiential learning. I do like to mention another unique thing about our school is our connection to workforce development. And we are the coordinating center, the region five public health training center. So we are the coordinating center for a six state region where we think about the training needs for our current workforce and for our future workforce. So we do extensive training needs assessments across this region and then have data informed training programs that are aimed at, again, both people working in public health right now and can often be applied and are open to our students. They're free, they're open to anyone. Um, so that's something we're very proud of here. And through it, we also have funding opportunities for our, some of our student internships. So that's something that's um, very important to our work here and related to our practice office. We have some other training programs too that are similar to that. I'll just mention them quickly. One's called Public Health Prepared, which is again, training, but focused on infectious disease preparedness. And we also are unique in that we have a preventive medicine physician training program here at our school, which is also connected to our practice office. So just different ways of thinking about practice in our school. This is our public health practice team. So again, me, the director of public health practice, Shaw Day is, she does the FAST, um, she basically runs FAST. She's teaching the public health in action class. So she is a big person that you would be connecting with through FAST. And Phoebe Kulik is our director of workforce development. We think practice is, is so much fun and we're excited to, to have you here and, and work and serve the community with us. So thank you. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Rick Neitzel to tell you more about global health opportunities. Thanks, Rick. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Flora. Uh, welcome, everyone. Let me get my slides up here. Uh, so it's such a pleasure to have a few moments here to speak with you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your Friday with us. We're very excited to uh, have this opportunity. And I'm going to talk to you, as you heard, a little bit about what we do here in terms of global public health. 
So I'll begin just with uh, our, our mission for our office, which is to support both faculty and student efforts around the world, uh, working on high impact public health projects in collaboration with a variety of international partners uh, focused on preventing disease as well as improving health. So we are a relatively small office. Uh, there are two faculty members, uh, Senior Associate Dean for Global Public Health, Matt Bolton, and myself, I'm the Associate Director of the office. And then we have three wonderful staff members working with us, uh, Shinieri Neal, Amy Sorgianis, uh, and Dana Thomas. So in terms of the things that guide our efforts at Global Public Health, and I should pause for a moment and say, many of you will have applied to multiple universities. If you are interested in global public health, this is something that the University of Michigan does really well. That goes beyond just public health, but I would say uh, the vast majority of units on campus here are incredibly engaged locally, uh, regionally, as well as globally. So the core principles that guide our efforts here in the Office of Global Public Health are really four. The first is we want to develop and nurture transparent and co-equal partnerships around the globe. Uh, the second is we're very focused on international capacity building, uh, and that could include here as well, of course, because we have capacities that uh, need to be built out as well. Uh, we very much emphasize interdisciplinary approaches. Uh, and again, all of this is in the spirit of uh, engaging with communities uh, around the world to promote public health. We do have a number of student-based initiatives that the office hosts. Uh, so um, uh, each month we host something called a Global Crossroads Lecture, where a lecturer from uh, outside the United States will come or attend via Zoom and, and talk to us about uh, any one of a, a number of topics. Every fall, we have a global health kickoff to connect students and faculty who are working um, uh, in global public health. And each winter, students who have received support from the Office of Global Public Health to do their global internships, which I'll talk about in a moment, we all converge and host a, a very um, uh, wonderful and, and fun poster session. We're very fortunate to have a National Institutes of Health grant here uh, that's called the Minority Health uh, and Health Disparities Research Training Grant. And so this is a research training program that's intended to send U.S. citizens uh, overseas to uh, learn more about the, the practice and research of global public health. Uh, we also try to prepare students as well as we can for doing global health work. And so we hold workshops on how to write a proposal to get funded for a global internship, as well as how to prepare for that global work when the time comes. And in terms of communication between our office and the student body, we do advertise uh, both national and university-wide global health events over the course of the year. Uh, we are happy to offer office hours for people interested in planning out a global health internship. Uh, and we also sponsor a group called the Students Engaged in Global Health, uh, or SAG. Now, there are a number of academic programs here that we work in collaboration and partnership with. So for those of you interested in epidemiology, the Department of Epidemiology has a global health epidemiology track. Uh, in my own department, Environmental Health Sciences, we have a focus area on global environmental health. The Department of Health Management and Policy has a program on global health in health management and policy. And then we're very pleased to offer a program that's housed again in our office that's called the Certificate in Global Public Health that uh, any of our master's or doctoral students are, are absolutely encouraged to pursue. So for those of you who are especially interested in perhaps doing an internship uh, outside of the United States, we have a great track record of funding approximately 50 to 60 global interns each year. Now, the past couple of years, uh, mid-pandemic, of course, are a little bit unusual. But even during this period, we have been able to fund students to do uh, either completely remote projects, as you see in 2020, where we were able to fund 18 students. And then in 2021, we were able to fund 28 students. Um, 24 of them worked with um, uh, in-country partners outside of the United States. And for the first time, we had two students looking at migrant populations even here within the United States. So you can see there's uh, lots of opportunities as we hopefully someday transition out of the pandemic. Uh, again, I expect we'll see a strong return uh, to folks actually traveling to the uh, countries that they're interested in doing their work in. 
So with that, I will again, thank you so much for your time. I hope this has given you a little bit of a, a sense of how we focus on and conduct global public health research and practice and service here in the School of Public Health. So thank you again, and I'd love to hand the mic back over to uh, Emily Uat. thank you. Thanks so much, Rick. Uh, so you've heard about some of the opportunities that are ahead of you, um, both if you're interested in the DEI space, uh, about our opportunities in practice in global public health, and my colleague Mariana talked to you about careers. Uh, let me give you a little bit more context um, or talk briefly about our school community. There are around 185 faculty members here in the school, and our faculty are renowned across the world. Uh, Rick just told you about um, different spaces where we do global public health work, um, but certainly we have faculty um, who have relationships with their, come from other countries, from their home countries, um, and have active research projects all over the globe. Additionally, we have around 350 dedicated staff members who help keep the school running and contribute to both our research and our teaching missions. Our research portfolio is around $90 million a year and is the most per faculty member at the University of Michigan campus. We're proud of that because the University of Michigan is ranked as the number one public research university by the National Science Foundation. And we here at the School of Public Health play an outsized role in that. If you are interested in research, we have more than 30 research centers here at the School of Public Health. Our alumni network, which Mariana talked about a bit, is extremely strong more than 17,000 people. We have alumni on our continent, on every continent, except Antarctica. Maybe one of you will be the first to get there. Our alumni network is more than just a number. They're very active in the school community. Mariana mentioned and showed you some screenshots of our online networking platform, Michigan Public Health Connect. We have more than 700 active mentoring connections between our students and our alumni. The mentoring program is just one of the many ways that you'll be supported in your time here at the School of Public Health. As you may already know, you'll also be working closely with your program coordinator in your admitting department or program. You will spend time with them in your upcoming departmental sessions if you haven't already met them. Um, hopefully you have had an opportunity to connect with them already. Across the school, we collaborate closely to support you academically and also to support your social, um, social and emotional wellness. Our student programming includes everything from financial workshops to community service opportunities. So we also work closely with student organizations and have social groups for first generation uh, student parents and international students. At Michigan Public Health, we also benefit from having an embedded counselor from the University of Michigan's Counseling and Psychological Services Office, who is here solely for School of Public Health students. We can also assist if students have food insecurity or in the event of financial emergencies. When you come to school here at the University of Michigan, you bring your whole self and we're prepared, we are preparing ourselves to support all of you. Okay, we've been talking a lot, so I want to do one more quick question. Uh, and if you could please use the chat function to answer this one. In just a few words, uh, what topic in public health are you most passionate about? What's something that excites you in public health? We'll give folks a minute to type in their answers. And uh, Mary Beth, if you would join me in reading aloud some of the responses, that would be great.
seeing a lot of folks populate the chat. I'm seeing mental health, environmental health, nutrition, health equity, environmental justice. Thanks so much for all your responses. It's great to see. Public health is truly a field where we attract people who are passionate about some of these initiatives. And it's it's really rewarding as you know, Emily and I work at the school and contribute to that mission. So thanks for sharing all of your, your thoughts. Yeah, I would invite all of you to look through the responses in the chat um, and see that you're coming uh, to a community of like-minded individuals. Uh, there's a diversity of answers, but there's also likely someone in the chat that you have something in common with, uh, a future classmate. In a moment, we're going to transition to our current student and recent alumni panel. Um, so you can get another perspective and further deepen your understanding of the school. Um, but we do have a few minutes for you to take a short break, stretch, use the bathroom, or otherwise just stop looking at a computer screen. Um, so we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, which is great. Um, we can give you somewhere between four and five minutes to go ahead and take care of your needs uh, before Mary Beth will be back to moderate the panel. And I'll give you, you a moment just to get settled, adjust your headphones, get comfortable. Um, we're going to talk for about 30 minutes here with some of our alumni and some current students. So welcome back to the second portion of today's programming, officially the kickoff of our current student and alumni panel. We're really fortunate to have people take time out of their busy schedules to chat with you all today. Um, this afternoon, we'll have representatives from our online program, as well as our six academic departments. So very excited to hear from those people who you'll see in just a minute. As mentioned earlier, my name is Mary Beth Carroll and my pronouns are she and her. And I work as the Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions within the Office for Student Engagement and Practice. We're also referred to as OSEP. Hopefully you've heard about our team and our office. Um, as a forewarning, uh, there are a lot of acronyms used around the University of Michigan campus. So be on the lookout for a cheat sheet ahead of starting classes this fall. Uh, just to give you a bit of a sense, um, you probably did interact with our team in some form uh, throughout the application process. Um, to give you a little bit more of a sense of who OSEP is, um, again, we, we support and we manage current student services, including things like student records, course grades and evaluations, uh, career services, public health practice, uh, student life programming and support. And we do, again, have an embedded uh, counseling and psychological services counselor um, within our team as well. Uh, we partner really closely with um, our academic departments and programs to ensure that our students are fully supported throughout their time here at Michigan Public Health. So again, we're going to spend about the next 30 minutes or so hearing from some of our current students and alum. I do have a series of questions that I'll go ahead and ask our panelists. But before we do that, I want to give you one more plug again for the really important uh, department and program sessions that we have occurring mostly um, this next week, but also throughout the remainder of March. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, again, we strongly encourage your attendance at your admitting department and program session. Um, again, these, these sessions are going to be in a much smaller setting, and they'll allow you um, to have personal interactions. Um, by engaging in this opportunity, again, you can get to know um, some of the faculty within your department and make some really great connections with current students, too. So we hope that you'll take advantage of those opportunities. Um, be on the lookout as well for more reminders about login information for those Zoom sessions. So before we get started, uh, why don't we go ahead and get some quick introductions from our panelists. Um, probably important for you all to have a bit of a sense of who they are. Um, you can see on the screen here highlighted our current students as well as our alum, and we'll go through quickly and just have them introduce themselves. Uh, so first up at the top there under current students, I see Brandon's name. Brandon, would you be able to kick us off by introducing yourself? Yeah, for sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Brandon Bond. I use the pronouns he, him, his. 
I'm a second year graduate student in um, health behavior health education department with the injury science certificate and I'm also a dual student in the School of Social Work doing global social work practice with the trauma informed care certificate. Nice to meet everyone. Awesome. And if we just want to continue down the line, feel free to do that. Hi, everyone. My name is Reed Richards. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I am a first year population and health sciences online MPH student. I'm very excited to be talking with you all today. Hello, everybody. My name is Pedro Orozco Elpino. I'm a, I use a he, him pronouns. I'm a PhD 50 year student at the biostatistic department. Hi guys, my name is Jumana. I am a first year student in the residential health management and policy program, specifically doing the master's in health services administration. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm excited to tell you guys more about HMP. Michael, you wanna kick us off for our alum? I don't think we can hear you, Michael. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so I uh, graduated in 2017 with my MPH in EHS, um, concentrating in industrial hygiene. Um, currently, in, uh, I work for General Motors, and I am the workplace safety data analytics lead. Um, also, I passed roles as a safety specialist and uh, industrial hygienist. And my pronouns are he, him, his. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Zapes, and my pronouns are she, her. I graduated last spring in April and uh, with an MPH in nutritional sciences. So since this past summer, I've been a dietetic intern with SBH's dietetic internship. And that's a required step in order to become a registered dietitian. So when that's done in, in a month, I'll be able to take the RD exam. And I hope to work in clinical pediatrics. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Harita. Um, I graduated from the epidemiology department um, with an MPH in general epidemiology in 2018. My pronouns are she and her. I currently work uh, at Michigan Medicine at the Department of Internal Medicine as a research associate um, working on a clinical trial for diabetes prevention. Great. Well, thank you all for the introductions and again for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us today. Um, why don't we go ahead and jump in and I think as we warm up the conversation, let's start uh, with some of the things that maybe you wish you knew um, is kind of a framework for this conversation. Again, it is informal and please feel free to unmute and chime in with anything that you might have um, to share with our admitted students. So with that, I'll pose the first question and that is uh, looking back, uh, what, what do you wish you knew when you were going through the decision making process? Um, so anybody want to take that one to start us off? I'll bite. <laughs> so thanks, Raina. As an online student, I think I had a little bit of concern around what kinds of connections I would be able to make with classmates and how accessible my professors would be coming into this online space, right? We've all been in a pandemic for way too long now, but um, doing that for school and having it be online is a little bit different compared to being in person. And so I wanted to make sure that I would have those opportunities for connections. And I'll say on the other side now as a first year MPH student in the online program, that the ways and methods to communicate with your fellow classmates and even with the folks in the residential program are just tremendous. I have classmates that I talk to every single day. Uh, I have great access to my professors. We're able to communicate about assignments, about recent news articles we might have seen that apply. Um, Dr. Neitzel, who spoke to you all earlier, is actually my current professor in my environmental public health class. Um, and so you're really able to, to build those connections and foster relationship with folks, even if you're in an online setting. And that's something that I wish I would have known going through the decision-making process to not worry about because it will happen. Yeah, and I would say for myself, um, 
considering that I'm a first gen student, I didn't really know like what to expect in grad school or anything. So I think one of the main things was just kind of like how it's different from undergrad. So from it was like my experience, it's been um, a lot of group papers, a lot of group work um, and all that, because like they really want to prepare you for like once you're actually in the field, you're going to be in groups like no matter what. Um, so I think that was kind of like an adjustment of kind of doing like my own papers or like own assignments and everything to going where almost every class has like some collaborative um, type of work. Um, also that biostats is not that bad. Um, yeah, I was terrified coming into um, the program to do that class, but it ended up being like super great. My professor was amazing. So I actually genuinely feel like I learned that. Uh, I also think um, recognizing just like how my learning style will also mature or change um, over, I guess, like my time here in grad school. Um, so recognizing that I'm kind of done with the content-based classes and everything, like even though the, those are interesting and everything, the way that I best learn now as opposed to undergrad is like by actually experiencing things. So taking classes where we're working directly with community partners um, or producing things that I would produce in an actual job. Um, it's been, yeah, a big shift between that. So I didn't expect that coming in. So just, yeah, recognizing the changes that are gonna happen within myself is just something that um, I kind of wish I knew, but I'm excited that I'm getting to learn it right now. Um, I wanted to say, uh... Yeah, my study is not that hard, and uh, um, I really like it. But more specifically, something I wish to know it was the importance of internships. When I first started, I, I come from Mexico as an international student. Internships is, is a completely different world in Mexico. I got here, and it was October, and people were already talking about, are you going to get an internship? And, and that felt like the world was crumbling to me. Like, what does it mean to me or my, you know, my, my initial stage. But then uh, SPH has a huge amount of resources for that. And that really kind of saved the day for me because they were able to explain like, calm down, you're a PhD student, you need to worry about this for the next four years. But coming from a different country, from a different environment, from different expectations, it felt like like internships was a huge deal here because it is, I think so. And I wish I knew a little bit better that um, once it's a huge one, it's a huge deal, and two, it's different for PhD than master students, the timing and the expectations of doing one or not. Um, and yeah, and I think Harita was in a, I was GSI for Harita. Oh, I see you. Yeah, I'll just um, go ahead and I wanted to second everything Reed and Brandon said, um, but an additional item that I was going to include about what I wish I knew is that um, Michigan SPH alum are truly like so welcoming and nice. I don't think that's something I took into account upon entering the program. And I think I spent a lot of my first semester being very nervous to do the outreach. But every person I reach out to is so nice. They're always willing to have a conversation. It is truly something that I wish I utilized a lot more earlier on. So it's something I would really encourage you all to do. That's great advice. Um, one thing that we've talked a little bit about throughout this first question is, um, you know, support services and, and students getting through challenging times and challenging classes and things like that. Um, also faculty too. So does anybody want to say anything in regards to maybe relationship building with faculty or um, a specific support service that helped you succeed within a class or something like that that might be helpful? I can speak to this um, during, uh, as a student, when I was a student, um, I think the one nice thing that I noticed the difference between undergrad and like a grad school is that faculty um, treat you as if you're colleagues. Um, and that relationship is, um, it extends of course as a student and actually as you graduate 
and you know start your careers in the public health profession and they make it known and they make it really easy to talk to them and i think that was the biggest difference that um i had not expected but um definitely my experience was positive where it was easy to just knock on professors doors have a chat with them in between classes before class starts after class starts um sometimes you run into them in the cafeteria and you get to know them on a more personal basis <laughs> and um it, it was it was great because you get a chance to learn about careers in public health and those conversations as well as like how the things that you're learning during that semester really matter in the field um and uh i would probably suggest when you do come to school here um, that, you know, take advantage of those relationships because it could be intimidating at first since, especially if your experience in undergrad was that like the professor's up there and I'm down here and I don't have it, I don't have a chance to say hello to them. It's so different in grad school and take advantage of it because I think it makes your two year or two plus year um, experience at Michigan a lot more enriching. I have to agree with a lot um, that Harita said as far as the faculty being very welcoming and allowing us to feel like we could go to them whenever we needed. I will say, given that I just graduated in um, this past spring um, in 2021, I was an online student for a fair amount just due to the pandemic, and I still felt that connection with the faculty. They were always available through email, um, and even like before I even went to the program, I talked to a faculty member, and that made me feel com more comfortable coming to the university, so I just felt that from right, right in the beginning, and the other thing the university has, in addition to the faculty, are the alumni networks, and so they offer a mentorship program, and I, I did that both of my years, and I also felt connected that way, getting additional support from, from um, the alums that I was talking to on a monthly basis. Um, and as an intern now with their program, I also have a lot of support and I still talk to the faculty. So if I have a question about something I'm going through with the rotations I'm doing for work, um, I've had vitamins and minerals questions that I've been able to reach out to my professors for. So lots of different things like that. So I definitely think you get that support that you need. Um, even though it's a big university, the school itself um, doesn't feel so overwhelming and big. It, it feels like a small environment once you get into it. Thank you. Um, so we know that many of our admitted students um, today on the call are accepted to multiple schools of public health as many of you were um, and they're trying to obviously determine where to pursue their graduate education in public health so if if you were walking down the street and somebody asked you what were the two or three factors that helped you choose michigan public health down to the nitty-gritty what would what would you say so i can take this one um hopefully i'm unmuted but um i'd say my top two were um, you know, I, I when I called in, they were going over the outcomes or where people are employed. So I spent some time considering that for all the schools that I went to um, and information like that that was available. And uh, secondly, it was um, I really felt that the faculty and staff were really responsive. I, I didn't. Uh, some other schools were maybe less responsive. Um, so I, I really felt comfortable and I felt like if I had any specific questions about programs, they'd be answered, um, which held true. But uh, I primarily it was, I, I knew which career paths I wanted to pursue. Um, and looking at that outcome data was really helpful in me making that decision. I also, um, so this might be a little cheesy, but between my experience as an undergraduate um, student and also my husband's experience at Ross um, MBA program, it was obvious to me that the university has a strong commitment to excellence. And so I really felt like, um, I really appreciated the high national rankings for both the larger university and the school, the strong alumni network, the level of research that was taking place, the caliber of the faculty, and I just love Ann Arbor. And I also think that the university is recognized worldwide. And so I knew firsthand from my undergraduate experience um, in my prior career that that recognition and network really opens doors. I would say for myself, um, I guess like I ended undergrad here and started grad school right after, but ended and started within like the start of COVID and everything. So I think that was a huge determining factor too. Um, just like logistically, like my family is here. Funding wise, it was a lot more accessible um, 
and all those other, yeah, important logistical aspects. Michigan just like made the most sense, but I think most importantly, um, I wanted to make sure that I went somewhere that saw the same potential in myself that I see in myself. Um, and I felt like Michigan did like a great job at showing that, whether that was through the communication that they provided to me, the funding that they gave, um, and then also just like recognizing that for a lot of you, it's only going to be like a two year program um, if you're like in the master's program and everything. So um, I was also just trying to be conscious of like, how can I make the most of those two years? Um, I felt like since I was here for undergrad, knowing like how Michigan works and everything that I like knew exactly kind of like who to talk to, where to go or how to really, really make the most of my experience here. Whereas if I went to another university, it might have been uh, more of a learning curve um, within like my first semester, first year, but by that time it's already like half the semester. So yeah, just um, being somewhere that can support me and somewhere where I can just make the most of the opportunities presented there. So why don't we, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna add from the online student perspective, cause I know there's so many different online programs that are out there. Mm -hmm. And I was accepted into a number of them. Like I'm sure many of you are, if you're considering the online MPH um, at Michigan or even the, the online MS. Um, one thing that I find, or that I found to be a, a huge determining factor for me was the program design. So one of the really nice things about the way that Michigan's online MPH is designed is with great consideration for the fact that many folks in this program are working professionals. So I work full time for a federal public health agency and I attend my classes. Um, and having that flexibility and recognition from the program, the program coordinators, all of our administrators and faculty has made a huge difference. I would echo what Brandon said about feeling valued and the school seeing your, your potential. Other places that I looked at, I was just one of many. I was a number to them. Whereas with this online program, the responsiveness, the way the program was designed, um, it really lends itself as a working professional to um, having the type of flexibility that you'll need to succeed in your classes, but also in your professional life while you're doing those things in tandem. And that was a huge determining factor for me in choosing this online program over others that would require me to come to campus or didn't have the same kind of elective offerings or too many elective offerings, frankly. Um, that it was confusing and overwhelming. So Michigan was a really good fit with thinking through how a working professional can achieve this master's degree while working. All really good points, and especially for our online students too. Thanks, Reed. Um, so why don't we take a turn and focus a little bit more on life as a Michigan public health student. Um, I want to mention that our current students, again, have the opportunity to join over 40 student organizations, and that's just within actually the School of Public Health. Uh, the broader University of Michigan actually recognizes over 1600 student organizations, so lots of ways to, to get that experience outside of the classroom. Um, we also have students who are getting engaged within the Ann Arbor and local surrounding area community too, um, maybe through volunteering, networking, uh, professional development. Um, so with that being said, um, do you all want to maybe share some of the different um, types of activities outside of the classroom that have enhanced your career or your student life um, while at Michigan Public Health? So I can- Oh, oh you, can, you can go, Michael. <laughs> oh, sure, thanks. So um, I was pretty involved. I was involved in undergrad. So when I got to public health, I, I was looking to get involved in, it kind of hits you because you only have like two years. So if you really want to get involved, you can't just uh, see what's out there and then dive in your second year. You got to really, you know, get, get involved right away. So um, I was on the Environmental Health Student Association and I was their representative to the public health student assembly. So the, the school as a whole has a governing student org. Um, and I, I got to serve as a member of that, which was super cool. And then uh, some or some smaller 
subject areas like industrial hygiene will have their own student group. So I was the president of the uh, University of Michigan Industrial Hygiene Student Association. You know, there was like 10 of us, but uh, we organized events with professors and fundraisers and stuff like that. And that was really fun. So uh, I guess there's so many different choices to choose from. That's kind of what I gravitated towards more um, topic based, but there are affinity group based ones and, and the school as a whole, the assembly one was great. So um, I really enjoyed it and, and kind of threw myself at it in my first and second year. Uh, like Michael, I was involved in a lot of clubs too. Um, and I found that to be a really great way for me to get connected. And I definitely recommend join a lot at the beginning. And then if you have to scale back, but try a lot just because the year two years go by really fast. So I was in the FAST group, also Maternal and Child Health Association and a sustainability club. But one of the unique things I did too was the, student, the school has a um, student run free clinic where we see patients in the community. And so I was able to provide nutrition counseling and get experience that way. But even a, on top of all those and in the internships and all those things, there's cool things like student football tickets and also um, tickets for the University Music Society where you can see Whitten Marsalis and other huge performers for only $15. So not just within the university, but also within um, you know the campus and the Ann Arbor community as well. There's just so much to take advantage of that really enhance my student experience. I, uh, I, I agree with Michael and also about that. In getting engaged early on, it's, it's better than, than waiting a little bit more. But I wanna say that uh, it sounds like too much, like how can you be in so many groups and on top of grad school? But I just wanna reassure you that uh, groups kind of are made of students like yourself that are as busy as yourself. So all the meetings and all the events that happen are very cognizant and very aware that you don't want to be every Friday and every every Saturday doing stuff for, for your associations. So don't worry about that. Just just get involved and, and you'll see that you'll you'll get more back than than you would ever expect. Uh, I was involved with SPHD, uh, which is the uh, PhD uh, association for SPH, SPHD. That was a lot of explanation for an acronym. Uh, and and it's it's been great because as uh, value statistics department, we don't get to interact a lot with the other departments because they think our subject is hard. <laughs> uh, and and SPHD made it so much simpler, so much easier because you get to talk with other PhD students from all the departments and uh, you get to know people from across this PhD community. Thanks, Pedro. Um, we are getting close to the end of our time together today. Um, the panel for me certainly flew by, so we hope that you all are leaving with some nuggets of inspiration and advice as you make your, your determination in terms of what school you're going to attend. Um, there are a couple more slides that I briefly want to go through before we do close out today. Um, but first and foremost, on behalf of all of our speakers, definitely want to thank you for joining us. Um, on your screen there, you can see um, a couple images for ways in which you can keep in touch and connect with us. Um, be sure to check your inbox for um, new issues of the Vector Admitted Student Edition. Um, the next one will actually be coming out early next week. And if you haven't already, please follow us on our social media uh, channels. Um, with that being said, I'm pretty sure you can follow Dean Bowman on Twitter um, and check out, check out Instagram. Um, today we're featuring one of our current nutritional sciences students who's taking you through a day in their life. They're there to answer questions for you. You can see how they made their trip into campus. And I even saw a highlight of the first class that they went to today. So be sure to check those out. Um, in terms of next steps, as we've kind of echoed throughout today's conversation, um, we do have upcoming department and program sessions. Um, with that, again, we look forward to spending more time with you over this next week. So be on the lookout for additional reminder emails about these opportunities. Um, there are a couple more opportunities that we want to make sure that you all are aware of, and they'll pop up here in just a second. Um, so coming up next week, um, we have a special programming for first gen and international students. Um, we've talked throughout today's um, presentation a little bit about those support services we have for those populations. So really excited to give you an opportunity to talk to current students in an informal setting and to 
be able to answer your questions. Um, in addition to that, there are some other ways coming up that are highlighted there for ways in which you can learn more about the student experience leading up to the April 15th decision deadline about a month away. Um, so let me share just a couple final thoughts before we sign off here. Um, we definitely recognize that there are a lot of factors that you're considering as you plan your next steps in life. Um, we often say that public health is a team sport. Um, so with that, please continue to reach out to us with your questions or any concerns that you have along the way. Um, as a team, we're here to support you. Um, so please take us up on that offer. Um, my hope is that today you were able to see a glimpse of how our community is committed to making the world a better place. And we truly hope to see you in person on campus this fall in the pursuit of a healthier world for all. Um, thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day and go blue. Thank you.